here from Profile Magazine, bringing you another episode of Profile TV. This week we have Yogita Ridgely. Did I get that right? Ridgely? <laughs> we were just debating about this off, off camera about how we pronounce people's names. But I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown. Um, so Yogita is a successful businesswoman. She's a CEO and founder of Travel With Me, Myself and I. She wears many hats. She's a solo travel specialist, a mindset coach, an award-winning international speaker, an author, a blogger, and has over a decade of solo travel experience. Tell me all about your business because it sounds fascinating. Um, we're obviously living in a world where we tra where women travel a lot more now. So but you do it solo. So that's a bit exciting. Yeah. yeah. No, I love it. it. Actually, the business kind of found me. So it was kind of a little bit different to what a lot of people's stories that I hear. So um, it started with a um, event where I just wanted to get away to have some time to myself. You know, you, you have all these different hats that you wear. You want, you know, kind of like at one point you start drowning in those hats. And so I was like, okay, I'm just going to go somewhere. And it was like such a last minute decision that I didn't have time to actually find someone to go with didn't even think about whether I was going to be alone I just went <laughs> so I just started from there and that's why I always say the business found me because it just evolved over the years of solo traveling then I started um, blogging about my travels and then I started getting a lot of um, information from people saying oh how did you do that I saw you were there and so forth so that triggered an idea of like being more in you know information based business and then just off from there it went yeah so and then also when you're on the road you meet so many other people who are also uh, traveling alone and then you kind of like have this conversation to you know two humans who are alone kind of get attracted to each other and so you have these conversations and then that's where the mindset side of things came along because a lot of these people that i met on the road were either running away from something or looking for something that they didn't know what they were looking for or what they were running away from. Mm. So that was the next, um, you know, level of the business to evolve into um, learning the mindset side of things. And I was always intrigued how our mind worked anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, it was amazing to, um, um, you know, like run away to something and then find something else finds you, so to speak. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Take me back to though where when you were younger or you know you're just leaving school you're 18 19 you're thinking what's my career path looking like tell me take me back to that but also about, about your upbringing as well yeah absolutely so i am indian not born in india though um so that's kind of like a little bit of a um um personality conflict that i had inside me because i was not western enough and i wasn't indian enough and so you know it's kind of like didn't fit in or didn't belong in any of the worlds so to speak um so um growing up i actually had uh really uh, you know strong indian beliefs indian uh, upbringing which i really loved at the time i didn't i thought oh my god i can't wait to get out of here you know sort of sort of a um, um a thought process you know mm -hmm. um and uh, so um coming through school and um you know having that mindset that you're not good enough you don't fit in you're not you know, wanted or you don't belong um, kind of mindset. You, I, I didn't really strive, so to speak, into anything. I just kind of stayed under the radar, so it was more like invisible, if you if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, so um, at school I struggled because I have my brain's wired in a different way, so I have dyslexia. So when I see when people see letters on uh, words on paper, they you know they put it in in a word and make a sentence. I see words on a paper. I see numbers all flying around and letters all flying around. So I really struggled with that. And then with going through school, like you know you have teachers who have. 30 kids to teach and then, you know, other um, personalities to look after, they saw me as a challenge or put me in the hard basket, so to speak, like, you know, oh, no, she's too dumb. Let's not worry about her, you know? So I kind of struggled with that as well, where you already had, like, I already had that conflict 
in like within me that I didn't belong. And then I had this conflict where I was not smart enough or I was not clever enough or I didn't pick things up like the other kids did. Um, so yeah, so right through high school, even when I started uni, I just stayed under the radar, um, hid myself from the world, so to speak. If if nobody saw me, I was happy. I was like happy as, but yeah, so um, having those um, problems it, like in your mindset or limitations, I should say, um, stopped me from actually really living my dream. Like uh, my dream was, especially when I was younger, was I wrote all the time, even though I couldn't spell properly in grammar. It was like all these different uh, cartoons I'll draw and pictures. I'll, I'll tell stories in every different way, except for like proper grammar and writing, if you know what I mean. So I was very creative in a sense. And um, so I wanted to be like a writer, a producer, a journalist and all those things. Um, and then when you finished high school, it was like, okay, well, can't really go to do that at uni because I will fail miserably and then I had this like really bad <laughs> image of like my future where I'm still living at my mom and dad <laughs> and broke as hell <laughs> so I was like no okay let's do accounting because I stood like I understood it easier it was easier for me so I graduated as an accountant and started working as an accountant and then ended up in a corporate world um, which uh, literally killed me at one point. Like I started feeling really, um, not, you know, you're not aligned with what you're supposed to be. You're not aligned with what you were um, on this planet. And I, I could feel it. Like I, money was great. The social status was great. I had heaps of so-called friends and everything else. And like the, you know, the picture from outside looked absolutely perfect. Like I had everything everybody wanted, except for I didn't want it. <laughs> so that's where the change came along. Yeah. So then how did you then leapfrog from going, from being an accountant? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> Trouble. Yeah, I think um, like subconsciously, I so badly wanted to get out of this whole, um, you know, the whole world that I built for myself. And um, I just really needed that space to to hop out, but I didn't know where. So like we we lived in New Zealand at the time. Um, and uh, we, what we did was like, you know, sell our businesses and, you know, pack up and bring the kids over to Sunshine Coast and do a new start, thinking that would be a, a you know, like a perfect um, step to finding something different. So when we um, worked at, um, at the time, the hotel was called Ramada Pelican Waters. I don't really know what it's called now but it was kind of like totally new building built on the golf course in Calandra um, and so I was the finance controller's assistant because my baby was still only like five six months old at the time <laughs> the younger one and from there it kind of like moved into us buying um, I bought a hotel in Malulaba and I ran that for 10 years and that was like another level of going under instead of coming up if you know what I mean towards um, breathing so I found I was more depressed and like a different level of darkness and a different lo level of totally lost myself and not really being able to really feel like the purpose anymore, like feel happy anymore. I was like in the motion, just motions happening. And each motion that is happening is like a different level of depression. And, um, you know, like you kind of like feel stuck and you know you're stuck, but you don't really know what to do or how to hop out. Mm -hmm. And that's when um, the very first solo travel trip came around I just said okay I'm running a business I'm looking after children I have two girls and I call my husband a son as well because there's three kids at the same time um, and then you know it's like everything in my life as I was weighing them nothing made sense like not I was not enjoying any of it and then I kind of went like okay one day I was just watching tv and on the tv there was like a um travel program and it kind of like said something in um in some sense like 
you know, change your uh, environment and you get clarity. I said, oh, great, I'll do that. So I booked a ticket. <laughs> I booked a ticket to London. I was like, okay, I don't really know why London. I could have picked any other country or any other areas <laughs> around Australia. But no, so that's what it was like. Literally, it was almost like something else just like guided me to do that. Um, so it was like I, I felt like it, I was driven by something. It was stronger than me, like some bigger power than me. It just happened. And then next thing I know, oh, my God, did I really do that? And like it's too late to now back out. And I actually really didn't care if I hadn't asked anybody, like hadn't told my husband yet that I was going to do that. <laughs> I just booked it, hadn't told my children that I was going to do that. I was like, that'll be fine. I was just like literally in another space. Like it wasn't even in my own body, if you know what I mean. It just happened. And then I went on that trip and that's when I found that you can leave your environment, but you're still you. So it doesn't matter you, where you go, your mindset will, if it's still the same, it will create the same problems. It will create the same drama. It will create, it will attract the same kind of uh, people. So it is not on the outside. Like you can buy as many nice clothes. You're not going to feel great if you don't feel great inside. So that was the, you know, that was the biggest lesson I learned on that trip. So yeah, so that was it. <laughs> so then, yeah, that's I made that big leap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you probably sitting there thinking, how do I then turn this into a business? There must be so many other people out there that are going through the same experiences I'm going through. How can I? How did you then? Yeah, take that leap and go. I'm actually going to start this as a business and yeah. and see what comes up. Yeah, actually, you know what, to be totally honest, I didn't change that into a business because I still own that hotel and I was still running that hotel. So when I came back from London, I just started a website and started blogging. And when I started blogging, I started getting a lot of people messaging me saying, oh, I read your blog. Oh, it was so amazing that you did that. So that became like an interactive thing where I was actually helping people. So I was feeling... At the same time, I watched that movie. I don't know if you remember Julia. Julia, you know that movie that she had. Uh, um, she had a full time job as a as a um, insurance broker, and she had started cooking by reading this cooking program and started started blogging about it. I don't know if you remember that movie, but anyway, it's a great movie that kind of like got got me started in that kind of. Uh, platform not still not thinking about business because I still have like a very demanding business that I'm still running so it just made me started to feel this feeling that I'm actually helping people and like it felt really good like it felt like I was my life was actually helping change others lives and then I realized that's what I want to do that's what like I'm supposed to serve that's what my purpose is and then from there the blogging went into mindset, mindset went into public speaking, public speaking went into writing a book, which is just published. <laughs> so it has happened also um, like someone else is controlling, not even my ideas, it's just coming as, as I'm evolving with it. So yeah, so it's, it's um, and I'm not like, you know, people say plan this, do this. I'm very intuitive in that sense. Like everything is like, finding me so instead of me um, looking at what can I do next I'm going like how can I help more mm -hmm. so and then the answers are coming back to me okay how about this how about that how about that so yeah yeah so to walk me through your what have been some of your I guess toughest decisions or toughest issues starting a business like walking away selling the hotel and going okay I'm going to make this now my purpose and my full-time yeah. job what are yeah. the toughest um aspects of that well um the hardest part was that i always had this corporate image where i was like a you know ceo of a big company i was like really well known in that hotel space and you know so i had a corporate image if you know what i mean and then i thought after selling that now, now I'm like nobody, nobody knows me kind of thing, you know, so that was a bit mind shift for me to actually really 
come along that I, I am actually happy being nobody because all I need to be that one person to somebody mm. and that that was enough, that was fulfilling, was more rewarding. The other one was my family thought I totally lost it. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? You work so hard for all this. You know, they didn't see what I could see and feel. And they were like, are you going to waste all your money? You're going to, you know, go bankrupt. You're going to, uh, you know, so they were like all very, um, not very supportive. Like I actually hid quite a lot of it from most of my family. And I was writing blogs for a whole 12 months. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's so hard having that support from your family and friends. Yeah, it was very hard. It was very hard because the first 12 months I was writing blogs, I told nobody. So everybody that was reading was not my family. Like normally when you start a business, it's normally your first buyers and your first comments. It's all your family, not me. It was totally opposite. <laughs> so eventually when they started to see how happy I am, um, you know, in that space that I'm creating for myself, they started to kind of like support, like one of my sisters started to really, um, you know, support. And then my husband came on board. He started to support and, you know, he still go, how much money have you made? It's like nothing. Oh, okay. Are you happy? Yeah. Okay. Then I'm good. <laughs> I'm good for now. <laughs> as long as you're happy, as long as you're happy, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. So, you know, what it's like you know when you when you call something a job you need to have money coming in like you know quite a lot of it and when you actually start a business it doesn't work that way you have to invest 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 mm -hmm. and then it's you start to and also I don't see it like you know something that I've signed up clients or celebrate I see it more like I've transformed lives so I celebrate then you know so the things that's a bit of a different uh, point of view in, in in how my business works for me yeah <laughs> You mentioned before about, you know, the whole in reinvesting because I think a lot of people struggle with business because they instantly want that gratification or they instantly need that income yeah. and they then, you know, you're very deflated when you don't see it coming in straight away. What are some tips, I guess, or some advice around that for anyone that's doing a startup or, you know, may even be in their first 12 months of business and they're not seeing that income come in yet, but, you know and getting really deflated but what's some advice you can give to them yeah look i can totally um understand i had like been there you know the first three months i was just spending money i was like literally everything i was the accountant i was that uh, marketing director i was the, you know um i learned how to design the website and do emails everything so and i was working 24 hours so i gave a job up that started nine to nine to do 24 hours kind of work <laughs> so and at the end of it all i was making no money so it went like okay um now what you know but because it was driving from like, I could really feel it in my heart and in my guts. Like it was like really deep in there. I, my mind was not strong enough to stop it. And that's what my, my thing was because it was my purpose. I could like, there was no excuse that was big enough to stop it. Mm. But I have met since quite a lot of people when they start a business, if it is not their purpose, it's not coming from their guts, like they don't have that fire in that in you know in their belly, they find that when the money is not coming in, their mind does talk them out of it. Mm -hmm. So that's when they go back to finding a job because then they have got the security of the income coming through and so forth and so forth. Mm -hmm. But I just had this belief that the purpose I am here for and the way my future is moving, I got to just close eyes and just jump, you know? And when I jumped, it just kept on holding me instead of letting me fall. So I met beautiful people who kept supporting me. I met beautiful, um, you know, people like um, that have got, have been there, done that kind of thing before that give you advice. Look, if this is really your purpose, you'll be fine. Just trust the process. Yeah. So that was the biggest thing that you, like my advice would be just trust the process and really know why you're doing your business, like why you're in it for. If it is just money, it will be very hard to go through that first 12 months because that's the hardest, the first 12 months. But if it is more than just money, like when I get emails from people that say, thank you, like just, just thank you, you have 
changed such a big part of my life or you've made such a big difference that is more than a million dollars worth like for me to see that and feel that and and then they're forever like grateful for any advice and any opinion that you have and they're always like uh, recommending you to other people that's like the biggest advertising you can do as well so you know it's kind of like more gratifying and more satisfying for me so yeah what have been some of your highlights over the last 10 years you've done so much in your field and industry you know mindset work coaching work your travel but what have been some of your real like champion moments yeah look my champion moments are public speaking like i do motivating uh, motivational speaking quite a lot um and so i have had opportunities to speak um, around the world and in Australia. This year, more in Australia. Um, so, I mean, you know, when, whenever you are actually um, on the stage and you're telling people your story, your, your, you know, your lessons, like we all have lessons because we're not perfect. We've made many, many mistakes. And if you haven't made mistakes, you haven't actually lived yet, you know, sort of thing. So when people come up to you after, after, you know, after your talk and they tell you how, a, you know, one little thing that you might have said that have moved them or inspired them or changed them. That's like my, like the highest moments of my, you know, my whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love that. I just adore the fact that, you know, you can make impact like that by, by just telling, by being you literally, that's all it is. Mm -hmm. And the other part, um, the other one is, the, like the biggest achievement for this year for me is the book, obviously the book that I have just published. And, um, you know, also in the last 10 years, I would say that this is more like a personal thing is that I'm a better person. Like I'm a better person in, in, in like in general, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a better mother than I was before. I think the part that was going on, I was like literally screwing my kids' lives up and I was not the, you know, the nice person to be around. I was more driven by like the ego instead of like my actual, you know, spirit. And, and yeah, so wasn't really the kind of person that I wanted to be. So this 10 years of the shift and everything that I have learned had kind of like, you know, made me feel like now, I am, I'm proud to just be naked me and not really worry about anybody's not, opinion. Not, not literally. <laughs> not on stage. In front of people. Yeah, just, just be like, you know, don't have to wear any mask anymore. You know, don't have to pretend that you're somebody, if, if, you, if you, nobody likes, like if somebody doesn't like you, it's okay because they're dealing with their things at the moment. So, you know, not everybody's going to like me mm -hmm. and I know that and I'm okay with that before. I used to die if somebody didn't like me <laughs> and I meet people like that now they get so offended if you didn't like them straight away you know sort of thing and it's like no honey that's like I do like you you have to like you first you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. what now what keeps your soul alive yeah that's a very good question and I, I love that question because you know what um, like from my background, like I'm Hindu uh, by religion, you know, I was born in Hindu family and in Hinduism and Buddhism, we have this f um, belief where our soul actually uh, picks our parents, picks our religion, picks our face and picks our everything that we, you know, we're born into. Um, and also it has got a purpose. So, you know, you, once you find that purpose, um, you you are evolving. If you don't find that purpose, you're going to come back and do the same thing all over again, so to speak. So for me, like to actually be alive and like, you know, live my life so fully and on purpose is literally to, you know, be happy myself and love me, which brings the, you know, the whole energy and the vibration up and keeps that attraction quite high up there and makes everybody else that's around me um, similar to what my beliefs and feelings and, and purpose and value is. Um, so I don't change them. I don't change my values to fit other into other groups and so forth. They have to come up to like what my values are and that's the kind of people I'm attracting in my space. Yeah. Very, very good answer. Very good. Wow, well, thank you. <laughs> what legacy would you love to be known for creating? Yeah, so I have this big vision. Um, I really want to do this for my 
uh, daughters. I've got two beautiful daughters and of course, grandchildren and grandchildren and so forth. Is that, you know, everything starts from within, like everything starts from within. So when you actually, um, I want to leave this legacy in like, especially the world we live in and the ones that yet to come is everything is somebody else's fault. The new generation has got this thing. Somebody else has done this to me and I, it's not my fault and so forth. And even we did, like I did that when I was younger, um, I, I really had this belief that I would have been a better student if my teacher taught me properly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I did not really admit the fact that I had dyslexia. And then when I found out I had it, I did everything to hide it instead of being like, that's what I say now when I say I stand naked and this is me. That's what I mean. Like I have got no mask on. I am, I am like, I, I am okay to say I've got this and that and the other. I have, don't have to hide anymore. So this is the legacy I want to um, leave behind is that be authentic you you are born that way for a reason embrace it love it and be it <laughs> that's it <laughs> you were very brave this year you just you've mentioned that you've written a book which is out yeah. now um tell us the process behind what inspired you to write the book and how do you get to that point where you think I really want to write a book and put it out there in the universe and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some people um, might say that, you know, I've gone mad <laughs> because a dyslexic woman doesn't write properly to sentences, mm -hmm. has written like 55,000 words. <laughs> so it's, it's, it was a big commitment. It was a commitment that I really wanted to, um, do because I felt it was not for me. It was for my soul. Like I, it, like my soul needed this to achieve what I was here for. So it was just another puzzle to my whole picture of me, so to speak. So um, when I actually started this process, to be totally honest, this book it has been in making for nine years. I want to write a book, and then who's going to read it? I want to write a book. Oh why would anybody want to read it? Mm. I want to write a book or who are you to write a book? So that, you know, that huge um, pull and push that you doubt yourself and so forth. And then it came to a point where I started to actually really put that energy and, and trust and faith in myself. The more I did that, the more I shifted my mindset, the more I worked on my mindset, the, this book is part of my healing part of my growing and part of my evolving. So it needed to happen. doesn't matter at what cost. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, it was not easy. Like people started to, especially my family, because they, it's a joke in my household. If they want to tell each other secrets, they will spell it out. <laughs> because mom will never get it. <laughs> so, so when I said I'm writing a book, they started laughing at me. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's um, it's, is it finding me, myself and I? Yeah. 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 So it's finding me, myself and I. What's the book all about and what is it um, designed to do in your yes. going to return? Yeah, that's a good question. Oh my God. You're full of good questions today. So the book's all about me. So everything from the, uh, literally my whole life. But the way it um, presents is about the reader because the reader will, any woman that picks this book up will pick it up for a reason. And the reason she seeks this book, she will relate to it because she has had the same emotions, same highs and lows that the book um, talks about. So, you know, any limitations, and I know every woman I've met have some limitation at some level doesn't matter how much work they have been doing for self-development and self-discovery and self-love there's still some limitation there's always some limitations i think we women are like our worst enemies you know we look at ourselves in the face and go oh what's that wrinkle oh my god you know <laughs> so we just like talk ourselves down to to nothing so this book is about not to do that you know, it doesn't matter the wrinkles, doesn't matter the color of your face, the height of yours, the size of you, whether you size two or 10 or 15, doesn't matter. You just enjoy who you are right now because there's no tomorrow. Mm. So, and that's what this is all about is that it's not about uh, me telling people 
how to do it is me telling people how I did it. And each one of those things that I did do is so relevant because it's like the process that I had gone through and it had worked. And then I teach them as well in my retreats and my workshops as well as like, um, you know, in my one-to-one coaching. So it's, it's, it's a um, process that I totally believe in. I totally trust. And then I told, like, you know, when I work with other people, I get a lot of uh, results from it. So, yeah, so that's, that's like the, the whole process of this book is all about me believing in it. And then every emotion that woman will relate to, um, you know, um, a lot of women have, um, that have done reviews on the book have said that, you know, they have felt some of those emotions quite deeply uh, and not some, you know, obviously everyone's got different um, parts that they have worked on. So, yeah will relate to something like if you read the book you will relate to something at least <laughs> yeah absolutely so in terms of your business success can you give our viewers say maybe five tips that will inspire them yeah absolutely yeah um okay so like you know the success in uh, in uh, each person's life is defined differently mm. and uh, you know a lot of people have um, their top five as you know as what's going on what they want my top five is like uh, with my business I get to spend more time with my family mm -hmm. and that's like my very top like extremely important to me and when I say family that includes me so I have time with just me I have time with just my daughters I have time with just my husband my parents and so forth so that's the family you know and to have a business like this to have that uh, you know value and to be able to actually put that in place it's not just like having a you know list stuck on the fridge and you never actually do it <laughs> you have to have organization skills so you really have to be super organized mm -hmm. so if you want to be a business person and you want to have family as your priority which means organization is is the key everything has to be planned so you are not struggling with you know and if your values are not achieved you're going to start feeling that the business is not really is running your life instead of you running the business um so that's tip one and i find i know i, I do meet a lot of especially business women that i work with that do let the business run them so they get down to the place where it's total burnout yeah. um and then you add children to that and then you have add husband to that <laughs> And there's like, ah, just drowning somewhere in the middle, trying to breathe, just stay underwater. Um, so over water, sorry. Um, the second one is that honesty. So, you know, it is so important to be honest. Like this year, I have had quite a lot of personal problems with my husband not being well. And because he was not well, I had to make quite big decisions that was um, to do with my business. So one of the big decisions I had to make was to um, postpone my retreat. And I had to be so honest and so vulnerable to all my, um, you know, clients and customers and everybody that I was working with that if I postponed this, I have got their support. And because I was so honest, I had their support. And they just embraced me saying, no problems. We're happy to change dates. There were so many people flying to Sunshine Coast. So I was feeling really torn. Like, you know, if I am going to be there, I'm only going to give 50% of me, which is not fair. Should I give 50% or should I postpone, you know? So that was like a, a big um, decision. But Honesty made it easy because it was honesty. It came from here. They were all like, okay, we, we're going to support you. We're going to, you know, help you. Some of them even said, oh, do you want me to come and help out? <laughs> like, you know, look after your children and cook for you or something like that. So that was really, you know, touchy, you know. Um, and the other one is actually surrounding yourself with right people. If you have toxic people in your space, it's going to start drowning you because it's not the right energy. So I am a big believer, like I have a certain energy and I attract them. And if I have energy that's not at the same level, 
I, I, I would like, you know, I would not like, I would really ask them to, you know, is there something I can do to help because I'm not coming down to your energy level, you've got to come up to mine. You know? mm -hmm. So that's very important to really have that information like within you that you know, you're aware that if you are in a space where people are not um, uplifting you, you have to, you know, decide whether they, they stay or you, you go, you know, sort of thing. You have to make that decision. So, yeah, so surround yourself with people that are uplifting, encouraging and, you know, and loving and supporting. Um, very important. I think it is, for me, it is one of the most important things. Because you, I find it really, um, we do as people find it really hard to like, you know, to cut those toxic, you know, you know, you've got these toxic people or these people that don't really fitting into your environment, but you sort of leave them there because you don't want to hurt their feelings or you don't want to have that <laughs> conflict. And yeah. I think you know, we've got to learn the art of, as you said before, not everybody is for everybody, you know, like people aren't going to like you, you're not going to like them. And we've got to accept that and realize, okay, well, they're just not part of our tribe. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing, like, you know, everyone's at a different journey. So at different levels, you attract different people. Like, you know, when you really think about it from when you started that school, you had friends, you, not any of those friends would be still in your space now. Some might be, but not every one of them. So there's so many people you meet right through your life. Only few stay. Yeah. Most just come in, they take, you know, part with you for a little while and then they got other uh, their part to follow and you go on yours. So my thing is the promise I make to myself, anybody that comes to my space, like on my path, my job is to help them um, on their path, not to hold them for my benefit, if you know what I mean. Because yeah. I do come on somebody, sometimes on other people's path, where I feel that they're using me for their benefit that's when I just like float away to my own path and just quietly just keep floating because that's their journey and this is mine, you know, sort of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we were about to close off 2019. What has been, I guess, some of your learnings from this year, but also what has 2020 got in store for you? Oh, wow. <laughs> How long have you got now? <laughs> <laughs> two seconds. <laughs> she says two seconds and hurry up. <laughs> okay, so um, 2019 was very challenging, but I say it with a smile because I have learnt to stop being a victim. A lot of years I've spent being a victim, and all I've done is made myself bigger victim by playing that role. This year was the hardest in every sense. Um, with um, husband not working for 10 months. So half the income and then double the responsibilities. And then you have got two daughters that you got to make sure that they're emotionally and physically doing okay. I mean, then they're not 100% because they're worried about everything that's happening as well. But saying all that would have drowned me. Instead, it shifted me to do things that is in my power. So I traveled overseas less and did more in Australia. Um, I helped more in my own local um, um, space instead of outside in Australia. And so, you know, you, you kind of like uh, my lessons was to learn how to be flexible and go with the flow because there will be lots of obstacles thrown your way and you can't let them stop you from achieving what your goals were. So the achievements I did make was finish writing this book and publish it, um, spoke um, you know, at different stages in Australia, I did a lot more self-development courses you know, and, and had more faith in, in how strong I really am. You know? <laughs> and it's one of those things, you actually figure out how much your strength is when you actually really get thrown in the deep end and you learn how to swim. You know? So yes, yeah, so that was um, in hindsight, a lot more lessons than blessings, but I am still counting every one of those blessings. The biggest one is that every one of these people that I've met this year and that have had done business with me or friendship in uh, build friendship in any sense, they have all come in, in the right space and right time. 
just when I needed them, if you know what I mean. So I feel like I have lifted my um, energy to a level where I've started to attract these really beautiful people who are, you know, supporting and, and encouraging. So going into 2020, I'm going to, you know, lift that up and then obviously got quite a lot of traveling next year to do. So I've told my husband, you've got two months to fix yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and the doctors have got two months to fix them so yeah <laughs> no pressure no pressure at all no pressure whatsoever <laughs> now you're about to kick off your book launch which is very exciting um yeah. are you traveling the country with your book i am so the book launch is on the 17th of december in on the sunshine coast and then next year i'm gonna do um more australia and then the rest of the uh, world so i'm going to be doing india as well as egypt and a couple of other places that um, i'm speaking so i'm going to be doing the book um, tours there um, but that's like a flexible plan because it's still quite dependent on what's going to happen um, health wise back home but yeah for sure definitely we're going to be doing like brisbane and closer places in australia for sure and New Zealand. <laughs> Is there any last words of wisdom that you would like to, to get out there to our viewers today? Uh, yeah, so the last words is obviously be you, be your authentic self and don't compromise for anyone. Mm -hmm. That's it, period. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good message. Yagita, thank you so much for joining us on Profile TV today. And look, we wish you all the best of luck with your book launch next year and um, I hope 2019 has a few more little blessings in there for you before it wraps up for the year but thank you so much for joining us thank you so much really appreciate the time thank you it was lovely to meet you too